Let's format a clean, simple schedule graphic. So I have this document set up already. I've brought in a cutout, done some effects to it. I have this lighting coming in. I've got some background effects and finishing effects. Check out my channel if you don't know how to do any of this stuff. I've got lots of videos on going over different player cutout effects, different background effects, different finishing effects you can use in your designs. We're just gonna focus on formatting the schedule in this graphic. So we're just gonna be focused on the text on the left side. That's the layout we're gonna go with. Text on the left, cutout on the right. You might have a different schedule graphic where you list your games up at the top or at the bottom with the image at the opposite side. But we're gonna go with a left, right, very simple look today. So let's start by making a new layer and we're gonna hit T for our type tool. And let's just type out the key information we want in each game on the schedule. We're gonna list all 12 games top to bottom. And basically you just have to ask yourself, what's the key information? We're gonna go with date, opponent, and time. You might have different information. You might wanna include location. But let's just start with date, first DC breeze, and the time, seven o'clock PM and we'll hit our check mark at the top to lock that in. Now eventually we're gonna duplicate each game into its own section and then edit each section, which I'm not gonna do in this video. I just wanna lay everything out, but on your own time, you should obviously go in and change the opponent of each game, the date, time, etc. So make sure the first example is exactly how you want things laid out. So it's a good idea to create some hierarchy, some variation in your text, especially when you have multiple lines very close together. So let's make the date a little bit bigger. And to do this, I'm gonna multiply this 24 point font by 1.6. 1.6 is the golden ratio approximately. So generally, if you do things in that ratio, things tend to look visually appealing to the eye. I don't know why, I just learned that and it's true. So keep that 1.6 in mind, but you can type in equations to the font size. So I'm gonna do 24, holding shift and hitting eight for my asterisk, times 1.6, and then hit enter, and now it blew it up to 38.4. And I'm also gonna switch this weight to, actually let's keep this one at bold, and we'll switch the other ones to a lighter weight, medium. And this font acumen variable, by the way, has tons of different weights, Highly recommend, you can really get specific with your font selection. I'm also gonna bring all of these closer together. So I'm just operating in the character panel, which you can get from clicking this icon at the top, or if you have it in your toolbar. But let's bring the spacing between lines down yeah, to like 30. And I think I wanna emphasize the date a little bit more. So let's highlight it again and switch it to black. Let's go up one weight in this font. That feels right. Now let's bring in our opponent logo. So that's another way you can further emphasize information. We're gonna use an all white version of this DC Breeze logo. So I'm just gonna bring that in and drag it to line up with our text on the left of it. And we'll make sure there's a little bit of space in between them. So this is like our basic block for each game. We're gonna have 12 of these going down. 12 is probably not gonna fit, so we're gonna have to shrink this down all at the same time, which is not a big deal. I'm gonna group these together in the meantime, so I have both layers selected, the white B and the text. Holding shift, you can click and hit the grouping folder. We'll title this game one. And yeah, let's go ahead, command T to bring this down because I know we're gonna need more space to fit 12. Whenever you're making a pretty text heavy graphic, definitely keep margins in mind, keep spacing in mind. If you hit command apostrophe, that'll bring up your grids. I have a different video on grids, guides, and margins you can look at to better understand and better set up your document for good spacing. So I'm gonna keep everything two boxes from the left, and we can also go like two boxes from the top. So it fits like pretty nicely in two boxes itself, right? Like all the text and the logo. So let's, let's go with that for now. And now with this game one folder selected, command J is duplicate. So we have a duplicated layer. I'm gonna hold shift and click and drag this 
downward. When you hold shift, it just allows you to drag in only a straight line, which is nice. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna select both of these now and duplicate them together. So holding shift, command J on both of the folders. Now we have four games, and now I'm gonna do the same thing with the four folders. Shift clicking between them, command J to duplicate, and then dragging it down. And then we have another wave of four. So I'm just gonna hit command J again. And there are 12 games for the season. Now, obviously we were way too close to the bottom right here. We wanna keep that two box margin. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna shrink everything a little bit by just selecting all of our games in our layers. And I can group these all together and just call them all games. And now Command T to transform all of these downward. And we can go to like about there. And you can see we have about two boxes from the bottom. We have that two box margin at the top and two boxes from the left. But to make sure the spacing between all of these is consistent, you're gonna wanna select all of the different group folders. So we've got game one, game one copy, which is game two. You can better name your layers than me as well. But I'm gonna shift click all of these layers to select them. Not the group, but like each individual folder within the full group. And then clicking this button up here when you're on your move tool, this is distribute vertically. So if you click that, you'll see it just subtly moved things around. So everything is exactly spaced. There's the same amount of spacing between the bottom of this group and the top of this group. Same with the bottom of this group and the top of the next one. So if you wanted to see an exaggerated version of the effect, you know, I can just move things out of place. And then again, holding shift to click all of them, click on distribute vertically, and it snaps everything exactly where it should be. Another thing I like to do with text heavy graphics is make dividing lines. And you can do that just by drawing out rectangles, sure, or drawing out lines, but I like to do it with text. So I'm gonna collapse this folder just to simplify things for now, make a new layer, and hitting T for my text tool again. Let's just make a dash. I just type the dash and now Command T. Let's stretch this thing out. And we'll position it right in the middle there. Then I'm gonna hit return on the same text layer and type out a bunch more of these dashes. Now Command A, select everything and we can increase the spacing between these lines and adjust it so they're hitting in between each game. So you can see like it's gonna take some messing around and I just deleted the ones at the bottom because I realized I did too many, but we want this last dash to fit right in between those final two games. So I'm just gonna hit the arrow key up on our leading, which is the space between lines. And see that went too much, so let's go with like 103.6. That feels pretty good. And if this is too thick of a line, we can reduce the height of the line by going down to this height percentage dial in the character panel. And if we want like really thin lines, really clean, thin, dividers, you can do that. And I'm just adjusting these with the move tool, making sure they're hitting approximately in the middle of these lines. We can clean things up a little bit more. Let's center all of our games on these dashes. So I'm just gonna click the all games folder, hold command and click on these dashed lines. And then with my move tool selected, you can hit that centering button to center everything and then we can move both the games and the lines away from the left side. And let's actually make room for a title going up the side of our design. So let's move it way over. And we can shrink these lines down too, like they probably don't have to be so close to our cutout. So Command T and then holding Option, you can drag them in just from one of these sliders. So now let's make our title going up the side. We're just gonna write out 2023 
schedule. And you can see our font is all wonky because it saved the settings from what we did to those lines, those poor lines that did nothing wrong, but we turned them into dividers. And I'm just gonna rotate this with Command T and clicking and dragging from a corner and crank this size up a good bit to fill most of our page. And I'm just gonna move this to be, again, exactly in line. You see when you move things, you get these nice pink lines that pop up. That is Photoshop Smart Guides. Those are there to help you when it suspects you're trying to align one object to another, one layer to another, those will come up, which are very nice to have. And I'm gonna keep this two box margin in mind that we created for ourselves. And let's give a little bit more space in between the schedule text and the title. Last thing is we'll just add the Carolina Flyers logo on top. So we know what team it is. And then we should be good to go. So kind of like this look of a normally oriented logo against the going up the side text. And again, we can check our margins. So let's go in, see this two box. Let's align the top of this logo with that box there. I'm actually okay with this red sticking out a bit just because it's really not the focal point. So maybe we can go a little bit above it with the white part of the logo too, but let's shrink this down just a little bit more. And then holding command, let's click on our logo and with our schedule, our 2023 schedule text layer selected, let's just center this on the logo, make sure everything is lined up vertically by clicking this align center. So the one other thing to keep in mind with schedule graphics in particular is it's usually common to have some indicator of which games are home, which games are away, even though you might switch this text to say like at, you know, whoever, Atlanta Hustle for the next game, if the next game is like May 6th, you know, besides having the versus versus at, you might have a further distinction. So for this graphic, you might take the team secondary color and we could put like a block behind each of the home games. So I can do that for a few of them. I'm just gonna make a new layer and we'll take a rectangle set to the team secondary red. And let's just draw a simple rectangle behind the text on the date and we'll make sure it is centered the best we can. And then you can just go through and duplicate this rectangle with Command J, drag it down to whatever other home games are on the schedule. Just make sure it is centered on each date. And that will kind of give this new feel to the graphic that is further emphasizing and differentiating the home games from the away games. And we'll do the last two just to be consistent. Six home games, six away games. Again, this is not an accurate schedule. They are not playing the DC Breeze in 11 out of 12 games, but you can go through with your schedule graphic, make sure all the info is up to date, double check it against the schedule online. Hopefully this tutorial gave you a good idea of how to lay out a schedule graphic.